Hi, it's Chester Tugwell, and in this video, I'm going to look at a non-destructive workflow with the Nick collection. I'm in DxO Photo Lab. You'll have the same options in Lightroom or Photoshop, I believe. So here's my image that I want to process using the Nick collection. And I've got it selected in the library. I'm going to go up to the Nick collection button. And before I do anything, I'm going to go to export settings. And I must have export as TIFF selected 16-bit. Uh, this is for the first edit for the image. Subsequent edits, I'm going to use different settings. So I've got that selected. I'll go up to my plugin, ColorFX Pro 4. It'll open up the plugin. You can see it creates a additional image there, a TIFF version of the image in the library. And it'll always give you one filter here. It'll be the last filter you've used in the plugin. I'm not going to spend too long formatting this, uh, not formatting, processing the, this image. That's not what this video is really about. So I've got the cross-processing filter. I'm going to all, and I'm also going to use dark and light and center. So I'll go to add filter there. Uh, click on that. And then what I'll do is I'll just darken the edges and increase the luminosity of the center there. Okay, so I've got my two filters there. That's absolutely fine. That's all I want for this image. Then at the bottom, you'll see there's an option here where my mouse pointer is, sort of bottom right of the screen. Save and edit later larger files. Now, that must be ticked if you want to eventually come back and change these filters or add further filters to uh, this version of the image. If it's not ticked, you won't better come back in and make changes to the settings you have here. So that's got to be ticked here. Save and edit later larger files. So I'll click on save. And there we are. You can see the changes made to this TIFF version. What I want to do is to be able to edit the filters that I've already applied to this image. So this is where you've got to be a bit careful. You've got to remember the settings. So I've got the image selected. I go to Nick Collection. Now remember my export settings are currently export as TIFF. Okay. So if I keep that setting and go into the same plugin, can you see that what it did behind the scenes, if I just minimize this, let it do its thing. I just minimize this. It's created a third copy of the image. And ColorFX Pro has lost the filter settings that were down here. It's only got what the one filter here, cross-processing. Okay, so I'll just uh, save that. And that, I don't want this image. You can see it's applied the cross-processing again, the cross-processing filter. So I'm going to remove that image. Definitely don't want to do that. I want to remove the filter settings that are already applied. So I select the image, I go to Nick Collection, Export Settings, and my action is Export Selected Files Without Processing. Click on OK. Go back to the same plugin. It only works if it's the same plugin. And there we are, I have the two filters that I previously applied. So let's go in and change the cross-processing. Let's choose a different color. Not really that interested in what it looks like. Let's choose something that just looks very different. I don't like that at all, but you get the idea. Okay, so this option down here is still ticked. Look, I could even add another filter. Again, I'm not really thinking about how this is going to look. Let's go for Glamour Glow. There we are. Very glowing. Not liking this at all, but it's just for demonstration purposes. Click on Save. And it's not added a further TIFF. It's just edited the existing TIFF. And I can, can keep going back to that. Uh, in fact, it remembers that setting. If I go to Export Settings, Export Selected Files Without Processing. So from now on, this is like a non-destructive workflow. However, if you then use a different plugin, so I've got this selected, I go to Nick Collection, 
export settings, export selected files without processing. Okay, so I'm leaving that as, as it is. And I'm going to go to Analog FX Pro 2 rather than Color FX Pro 4. Now, because this is effectively a different plugin, I'm obviously not going to see those filters down this side. So let's choose a particular camera effect here. Okay. And let's say for the film type, let's go for warm and I'll choose two again. I'm not thinking about the look of it here. It looks horrible. But anyway, I've got save and edit later larger files ticked. So I click on save. So here it is. And if I go back into that and I go back into the last plugin I've just used, then I still have the ability, I had the wrong one selected. It's because I had the raw file selected. So I go there, new collection, export settings, export selected files without processing. And I'm gonna go back to the last plugin I used. And what it's gonna do is bring up that filter. I go to film type. You can see I've got warm there and I can go in and I can change the uh, film type that I'm using there. Okay, click on save. So I can keep going back, but what I can't do, what I can't do is go back to the filters I applied in the first plugin. So look, if I go back to uh, Nick Collection, and this is the first plugin I use. I've still got the export settings, export selected files without processing. And I go back to this other plugin that I was using. And what I've done is I've baked in the filtering that I'd used using this plugin when I used the second plugin. So it's only non-destructive for the last the editing. And the processing is only non-destructive for the last plugin that you use on an image. Now, obviously I could make some further changing using Color Effects Pro 4, but then I'd lose the ability to edit it with Analog Effects Pro 2. Now, one way around this may be to have separate copies of the image using the different plugins. So then you can at least go back to that copy and uh, make any changes you want to. But if you're kind of using multiple plugins on one image, it's not completely a non-destructive workflow. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Well, thank you very much for listening. That's all I want to cover in this video. Hopefully you found it useful. Uh, please subscribe if you have, and I'll see you next video.